Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Let's go look around the garden and harvest some good food today. All right, check this out. It's 75 degrees, almost 76. It's projected to get to 77 today. 99% humidity. This is winter. Winter in zone 9A. It's mid-January and it's 75 degrees out today and about 95% humidity, so it really doesn't feel like winter. We do have winter coming. My uh, meteorologist friend who uh, looks at strategic weather says we've got a cold snap that uh, should last us into March. So I, I might delay my seed starting by a week just so I'll uh, not put things out too early. But for now, it's really warm, it's hot, and it's really making my plants grow. Let's go harvest some stuff. I've got some cabbages ready to come out and I've got some cauliflower I need to pull up. It'll be my first cauliflower. I'm gonna send it to my girl in, in Florida. My daughter's there in college and she loves cauliflower and she's a little bit homesick, so we're gonna send her a bit of home. I like to use my Oppenel knife to harvest with because it's quaint and it's French and everybody needs a carbon steel Oppenel blade for their garden, in my opinion, just because that's a gardener's knife right there. And look at this patina. It's earned this patina. I'm gonna sharpen it up today. The traditional method with a wet stone, an oiled stone. I also have Japanese water stones, but for my garden knives, this is sufficient. And it's all about the angle. It takes a lot of practice to get a good knife sharpening technique down, but once you get it, it's kind of like riding a bike. You just know the angles by heart. They make little wedges that you can use to help keep your angle. This is a cheap stone actually. I've had it for years. It's a coarser stone. It doesn't take much if you take care of your knives. If you've got a really dull knife, you might need to reprofile that edge with a coarser stone than this. Yeah, we're getting there. I've had this stone since I was a kid. This came with a, an old buck knife actually. So, same thing. Carbon steel can be sharpened much sharper than stainless steel, but stainless steel keeps its blade longer, keeps its sharpness longer, but it, you know. One test you can do is let the weight of the knife rest on your thumbnail, and if it catches, it's pretty sharp, and that doesn't slide off, so we've got a nice sharp blade there. Check out these guys. These cabbages are just about ready to come out. And I'm not gonna cut these. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pull them out and we're gonna replace this with a backup cabbage. Let's get down in here and just give it a twist. There we go. Look at that. All right. That's very nice. Some of these outer leaves will pull off. Some of that slug damage and snail damage. Twist, I'll take this root ball and I'll just twist it off. That'll go into the compost. This is a Hilton cabbage. It's a Chinese Napa style cabbage. And there's one of our culprits right there who's been enjoying this cabbage. So uh, look at that. Look at that big head of good cabbage there. Let's keep peeling this and I'll go wash my hands and wash this off. We go that's like a that's a beauty look at that so now I have a hole and what I'm going to do is pop in a backup cabbage and hope it will grow and head up like these guys uh, before the I have to use this bed for my spring garden and I just happen to have some backups over here these are my Chinese cabbages in waiting and I'll drop them in I'm not worried about crop rotation at this point. My only pests have been snails and I've got them everywhere. So uh, yeah, I'll put these in and see what, see what happens. Let's go get some cauliflower. 
Look at this guy. This is a beautiful piece of food right here. We're going to harvest this and send it to my daughter. Now, I have heard that if you cut the cauliflower out, if you cut the floret out and leave the plant behind, the plant may put on a second smaller floret. So we're going to try that and see if that happens. Let me just take my knife and get down in here and find the... See if I can get down here without tearing anything up. There we go. I'm just going to cut that right out of there. Just like so. And there we go. A beautiful piece of cauliflower. I'm going to break these bigger leaves out. Look at that. That's nice. Yum. I might have to nip a bit, taste it before I send it to her. We'll leave this behind and see if it sends up a second, a second floret. I'm not sure that there's time for that before I need this garden, but I'm going to leave it there and just see anyway. So here's what we have today. Cabbage, cauliflower, a couple of brassicas that are maturing right on time. And let's pack this up and send it to my daughter. I'm gonna take a little nip off the bottom first. Mmm. Yep, that's cauliflower. Y'all having fun today. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission cauliflower done. I had to put up a fence around here because my dog's been walking through my garden. The onions are growing well. They should be. It's uh, nice and warm. Here comes the rain. Kale's looking good. Beets are looking good. Carrots are looking good, except for where my dog walked through them. But they're still growing. So, uh, yeah, that's a that's a good thing. Dog footprints. I had a vermin come through and dig up and destroy one of my purple cabbages that was in a container and drug the leaves from way over there to way over here. So I'm not sure what kind of vermin that was. I hope it wasn't a corgi who's now interested in that. Go to compost and we'll put that back in the garden where it came from. Look at my others. They're heading up nicely. This is a Brunswick and we've got a nice ball forming there. Over here we've got the same thing. Nice little ball forming. Yeah, I'm pleased with the cabbage this year. We do have another cauliflower heading up. This one right here. And the florets are looking nice. They just kind of sneak up on you and appear overnight. That's not the way I thought it was supposed to be, but that's the way they're doing it here. All this will go in a compost pile. <clears throat> Put it back in the garden. My sister's plants are looking a little bit stressed out, like they need to get into their larger pots. So I need to pot them up soon. Yeah, that's not a good sign right there. So we need to get these guys potted up into the next size container so they can have some good nutrition and spread their roots out. Yeah. Okay, so it's the middle of January here in Zone 9A, and my garden looks nice and lush, but at, at March the 1st or thereabouts that week, I want all this stuff to be harvested and out of the way so I can transplant all my seedlings and I'll be starting those seedlings uh, either probably this week, maybe next week. Um, I need to get them going though so that we'll have something to drop in this garden. And I'm going to keep some seedlings going throughout the year so I'll have things to plug in when I pull a plant out like I just did today with that cabbage. I want to have backups. Right now I currently don't have anything growing as, as, uh, as seedlings in my seed trays or in uh, you know, potted up into little small cups, but uh, I do have some things in containers that I had planned on using as backups. But uh, yeah, that's the, that's the outlook. It's starting to get springy. We're, we've got our seeds bought, we've got our supplies purchased, and it's almost time to start seeds, and that makes me real happy. I'm standing out here, my glasses are fogging up. It's wet and drenched out here. It feels like growing season. I know I'm. I know we're jumping the gun. It's going to get. We're going to have cold snaps. But I have a week of growth in the 70s at, by day and in the 60s at night. That's so tempered, all these plants out here are going to really take off. And so I hope that we'll be harvesting some more in the week or two uh, to come. 
I've already eaten carrots out of my garden. I've already eaten a little bit of everything out of my garden. Um, I also took advantage of this to plant some more radishes in one of my raised beds. I won't need that raised bed for my spring plan until March. Well, I can grow a bunch of radishes in there uh, in, in, that, in that month and a half time. So I've sown them in there. My dog's walked on it already. Um, so yeah. Thank you for joining us at Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. That really helps us and encourages us. And uh, yeah, we've reached 25,000 subscribers. Actually, today we're at 25,100 subscribers. So thank you for subscribing. That's really a milestone. That was a goal of mine. I wanted to meet that goal by the end of 2019, but we didn't. We, we met that goal in the middle of January of 2020. So hey, that's close enough. So yeah, share our videos and comment in the comment section. We love to hear your comments. I have question and answer series that I'm doing and I've got a whole bunch of good questions lined up. So that'll come later in the week, maybe next week, and we'll get episode five of the Q&A going. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening. Bye-bye.